Welcome to yet another video of Code from Scratch. So, so proud of you for showing up today. So, we have done a few easy level and a few medium level questions related to binary search. Today, it's time that we finally raise our level to hard level questions. So, there are some extremely famous questions of binary search that are asked in a lot of companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, many, many companies. There are three extremely famous questions that I want to talk about specially. So, the first question is aggressive cows. You must have heard about the names if you have been doing a bit of DSA here and there. So let me know in the comments how many of these have you already heard of and do you already know these questions or has it ever happened that you know you tried but you did not understand these questions? Let me know in the comments. So one question is aggressive cow. The other one is painter's partition problem. And the third one is book allocation problem. So these three are extremely, extremely famous questions of binary search. So what we are going to do from the next video is that we are going to pick up these questions one by one. What we are going to do today is that I noticed that, you know, all of these questions have a particular pattern to it. So today I will be discussing that pattern with you so that tomorrow, if you see any question that is similar to this question falls under this pattern. So, you know, if someone forms a new question that forms under this pattern, you are able to identify it that, okay, this is binary search concept. So today we will try to identify the pattern, try to understand that why binary search would apply to this pattern. And from the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to pick these questions one by one, understand that why they fall under the pattern, and then we will write the code of them one by one. Okay, since these questions come under hard level, so we are not going to hurry at all. We are going to understand the pattern properly first and then we will move ahead one by one. So if you have any doubts, let me know in the comments. In today's video, we will try to understand the pattern and it will be much more clearer when we take examples, right? Obviously, when we take examples, it is more clear. But today I will introduce the pattern. So all these hard binary search problems will have two things in common. The first thing will be that you will be asked to maximize or minimize a particular value. Now this value could vary. So let's call this particular value as V right now. So you will be asked to maximize or minimize a particular value. That is the thing that you will have to do. And then you will be given some conditions that, okay, you have to find the value such that, you know, all these conditions are fulfilled. Now, all the questions that we are going to deal with, the hard level questions of binary research, they will have these two things in common. Okay, now let's see how will we use binary search and why should we use binary search. For example, let's take one small example, simple one. Suppose the question given to us is that we have to find the maximum value of V. Okay, and we know that the possible values of V can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We know that, okay, these are the possible values of V. We have to find the maximum value of V. Okay, now some conditions are given to us that, okay, these conditions should be fulfilled for sure whenever we find the value of V. Okay, so what happens since we have to find the maximum value, what we do, we first take the value of V as 1 and then we see uh, will these conditions get fulfilled if we take value of V as 1. Then what do we do? We take the value of V as 2 and then we see will the conditions be fulfilled or not. Then we take the value 3 like this we keep saying. Now let's say at some particular value, say at value 6, the conditions don't get fulfilled, okay? And we know that if we take a higher value, the conditions will never get fulfilled. And if we take smaller values, the conditions will always get fulfilled. Then in that case, our best answer is five. Let me repeat that. So these are the possible solutions of V. And now I'm saying that at six, we find that, okay, these conditions are not fulfilled. And we know that for all values above this value, the conditions will never be fulfilled. What did the question say? We had to find a maximum value of V such that the conditions are fulfilled. Okay. And we know that for all the lower values of V, the conditions will be fulfilled. Okay. So what is the best answer possible? Since we have to find the maximum value, our best answer is 5 because at 6, the condition fails. Right? So the, what is the maximum value? The possible values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, such that the conditions are fulfilled. What is the maximum value? It is 5, right? To revise again, we are taking an example where the values of V can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we saw that, okay, conditions are getting fulfilled for the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Conditions are not getting fulfilled for the values 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What is the maximum value possible? It is 5. 
But here the main catch is that if the value of V increases, we know that the condition will never be fulfilled. And if the value of V reduces, we know that conditions will always be fulfilled. We have actually done a similar example earlier. Say uh, we know that the square of 3 is 9, the square of 4 is 16 and the square of 5 is 25. Suppose it is given to us that the square value can never be more than 17 or something like that is given to us. Okay. So if we know that, okay, value of uh, square of 4 is less than 17, then we know that squares of all the values less than 4 will also be less than 17. Like square of 3 will be less than 17, square of 2 will be less than 17 like that. And we know that for all the values greater than 4, which is 5 and 6 and all, the square will be greater. Right. So similar condition will be given to us. OK, so what we will have to do in the question to revise again, we will first see that, OK, we have to maximize or minimize a value. Then we will be given some conditions. Then we will see that, OK, as we go ahead with the values, V, if we increase or decrease the values, we know that, OK, according to the condition will always be fulfilled or not be fulfilled. Let me explain this part again, because in all the questions, this will be the trickiest part. We will have to identify a pattern over here. We will have to see that the value V that we are dealing with. So as our value will increase, we will know that our conditions will always be either fulfilled or will not be fulfilled. Okay, so either with value increasing condition will always be true or it will never be true like that. So now what will happen is that instead of going one by one and comparing for all the values, we can apply binary search over here. Let me explain how. Say we take the value 6 over here. Okay, and then we see that, okay, for value as 6, are the conditions fulfilled or not fulfilled? Say the conditions are not fulfilled. Now we will know that if we increase the value of V, the conditions will get fulfilled. Or if we decrease the value of V, the conditions will get fulfilled. So according to that, we can either move to this part of the array or this part of the array. Let me try explaining it to you once more. So suppose there is an array given to us. Okay, now suppose we have to find a maximum value. Okay, now these are the possible values of the value V that you have to find. Okay, you have to maximize this V. Now, these are the possible solutions. If you check for any random element, is this going value V going to satisfy all the conditions that are given to us or not? Okay, if it is true, okay, and you know that for all the values is smaller, the conditions would obviously feel fulfilled. So what you do, since you have to find the maximum value, so you try for these values, the values on the right side, the bigger values. So you try to even maximize the value. So this is one possible solution. But since you have to find the maximum possible solution, you go towards right and you check. Okay, you take another value over here and you check. Now you suppose see that, okay, conditions are not getting fulfilled at this point. So for all the values bigger, the conditions will not get fulfilled. So what do you do? Now you check between these values. Are the conditions fulfilled or not? And this is how we are applying binary research. Similarly, say we have to minimize a value. Okay, these are the possible values that can be the answer. And we take an element and we see, does this possible value satisfy all the conditions or not? Say it does not satisfy. And we know that all the higher values will never satisfy the conditions. So we take a smaller value and try for these values. Which smaller value will you know, uh, satisfy the conditions because we have to find the minimum value anyway. So we check for these elements. Suppose we check for this element and see, okay, conditions are getting fulfilled, but we want the minimum value. So we again check within these possible solutions. We check the minimum value. Okay, here also it is getting uh, possible. Then here we check. Like this, we keep minimizing the value till we know that, okay, the conditions are getting fulfilled. So again, to revise, in all the questions, we will be asked to either maximize or minimize a particular value. Then we will know that, okay, these conditions have to be fulfilled. And we will know that as we increase or decrease the values, the conditions will either increase or decrease. So depending on that, we'll be able to apply binary search. So what we will have to identify in the questions is we will have to check that as we change the value of this V, how is the condition changing? Like the conditions that are given to us will be fulfilled when we increase the value of V or when we decrease the value of V. Like the square root question. Suppose say we are given that the square root has to be greater than 100. 
then we know that the value it should not be less than 10 right and all the values that are greater than 10 will anyway fulfill this condition and suppose we have to find the minimum value what will be the minimum value it will be 11 if you have not understood till now just keep these things in mind and when we take examples it will be completely clear trust me another thing that i really wanted to discuss with you is about search space now this is a term that you will hear a lot when people talk about binary search what does the search space mean so when I said that these are the possible values of this value V, this is actually the search space. See, I took the values 1 to 10, right? That is a search space. Those are the possible values of V. And then we took the middle element and then we saw, then we either went on the left side or on the right side, right? So in every question, first thing we will have to do is to identify the search space. What is the minimum value that we can have? What is the maximum value that we can have? Okay, so in every question, these are the things that we will do. Firstly, we will see whether we have to minimize or maximize the value. Secondly, we will see what is the search space of the V. Whether, uh, like what is the lowest value that is possible and what is the highest value that is possible. The third thing that we will do is we will go through the conditions. And the fourth thing that we will do is we will identify whether increasing the value V or decreasing the value V increases the conditions or decreases the conditions. Means it guarantees that okay condition will be true if we reduce the value or if we increase the value like that. So if we have these things in mind, we can apply the binary search. See, I completely understand if it's not completely clear right now because I'm talking about a lot of abstract things because from tomorrow when we take examples, it will be so much more clear. You will be able to identify what is search space. You will be able to tell, okay, what is V? How is it increasing and decreasing? And how can we be sure that, okay, condition will be fulfilled or not? For now, what I want you to do is go back and try reading the three questions and try identifying these things. Try identifying the value try identifying the search space of the value try identifying the conditions so from tomorrow we will start discussing the questions but i want you to try it yourself also so tomorrow when i explain you should be able to tell me in the comments that okay i was able to identify this or this is where i was getting stuck because we will be doing multiple questions the first time when you get stuck in a question the next time you should not get stuck in that question and that is what we want to develop okay we have moved to hard level questions now it will take a while to understand and that's fine just stay patient with me i am with you to explain you everything properly just try to remember the pattern before ending the video let's quickly revise once more first thing that you will see is that you will have to maximize or minimize the value the second thing that you will see is that values will have a minimum value and a maximum value so that is called a search space basically you have to find the optimum value in that search space the third thing will, that will happen is that you will be given some conditions and you will see that as the values increase or decrease the conditions will always be fulfilled or the conditions will never be fulfilled so according to that we will apply binary search because we will know that okay if we increase the value our conditions will be fulfilled or not be fulfilled so either we can go on the left side of the array or we can go on the right side of the array so we will apply binary search to find an optimum value of v so that it is maximum or minimum and it is also fulfilling the conditions so this is what we are going to be doing so i hope you have gotten some context Stay tuned tomorrow, do show up. These three are very, very important questions. And trust me, these are asked in a lot of, lot of companies. I even have a mock coding interview on my channel where I'm covering one of these questions. If you have watched it, do let me know in the comments that you were able to identify that, okay, this was the question that I was talking about. Otherwise, no worries, we are going to discuss it anyways. See you tomorrow. Ta-da.